Welcome in ladies and gentlemen to On Campus here where we talk about the top five happenings right here at home at Fordham University. I'm your host Nick Feta alongside my two wonderful co-hosts Julia Leahy and Grace Galbraith. Ladies, how are we? I'm great Nick, how are you? I'm doing well and Grace? I'm glad to be here. And I think you have our first topic for us, number five. What's on the menu? That I do, let's jump right in. So at number five, we have the cancellation, cancellation of the Keating Steps performance. Now, the Keating Steps is an annual performance showcasing all the student-run performing arts groups. <coughs> now, I was planning to go as a spectator, but I know you guys had a bigger role in the event. Uh, yes, we both are in a cappella groups, uh, respectively. I'm in the Fordham Ramblers, the all-male group uh, that was set to perform, but obviously Mother Nature and the Rain had other plans. Uh, it was disappointing, but of course, you know, things happen, and it could um, be rescheduled. Who knows? Right. I'm in the Satin Dolls female a cappella group. I was really bummed because we were planning on singing a song that I had arranged, which is always super exciting. I was really excited for my roommates and my friends to see it. Bit of a bummer. Um, this is actually a rescheduling of a previous Keating Steps uh, performance that was supposed to happen postponed again um, the reason it was canceled the first time was supposed to take place in like the third week of September but it was actually canceled um, for the marvelous Miss Maisel filming that took place on campus and that is actually number four on our countdown so marvelous Miss Maisel is an Emmy award-winning show it's streaming on Amazon Prime and about uh, maybe two weeks ago it uh, began filming on Fordham's campus so they filmed mainly on Eddie's and on the steps of Keating and uh, Grace they had to do a lot of stuff to campus to make it look uh, like the 60s where it took place. You know what they had to do? Yeah, so as we know, Keating's a modern building and it had to look like the 60s. So they had to remove all the air conditioners from the front of Keating and they had to turn off the Keating Tower bells to make sure it wouldn't interrupt any of the filming. That's, wait, really? Yeah. That's a lot, yeah. okay. Yeah, um, they had to do a lot. They don't, I guess, I don't know. Sometimes I have, one of my favorite shows was recorded here, Gotham, and they didn't touch anything. And I noticed right away. Uh, that was what I thought was cool about it, but I guess, you know, use our campus, but maybe everything that's in the way, they got to get, uh, they kind of got to work around a bit, I guess. Right, and I, I know I uh, was a bit annoyed when I had to take some alternate routes uh, to class and couldn't, couldn't walk the way I wanted. Nick, were you inconvenienced by the filming at all? Yeah, you know, I said it was kind of both. I, I was inconvenienced, but it was also cool to see. Uh, it's not something you get to see every day, uh, a film being a film, a movie, a show, jeez, excuse me, uh, being filmed on your campus. Uh, pretty cool, but I also wanted to play Frisbee on that nice day with my friends. Uh, we walked on to Eddie's and it was as if we committed some sort of crime. Right as we walked on, we had to walk off. So fortunately here at Fordham University, we have enough fields where we can go and find somewhere else. Uh, so we did manage to make it over to Jack Coffee Field to play some well, Frisbee. Speaking of Jack Coffee Field, let's move on to number three. So number three is Fordham football. football. And if you're just joining us now, you're watching On Campus Fordham Live, and we're counting down our top five biggest stories on campus, which brings us back to number three, Fordham football. So Fordham football has a winning season. There are five and one, which in simpler terms is five wins and one loss. Now, Nick, I know you're a pretty big sports fan. What is Fordham season? How does it compare to previous years? Well, you can go two directions with this. You can look back to the really old days of the legend himself, Vince Lombardi, and Fordham football back in the 1910s and 20s, where they were just a dominant force. Uh, so that was kind of the days, well, obviously hundreds of years ago now, where uh, a lot of uh, Fordham's history with the sport uh, is kind of set. As of recent years, they haven't really been anything special in terms of uh, their winning, where they can go. But this year, I think there's more buzz and, and hype around the season. 5-1 and one is a phenomenal record. Uh, they kind of remind me of my own team, the Giants, the New York Giants, where they're 4-1. Not exactly what you expected, but they're capable of it. Uh, so that's what I think is very fun to see as both students and fans for us. Uh, I haven't been to any games this year, which is crazy to me. I don't know, Julie, have you gone at all? I have not gone to any football games this year. Really haven't gone to any football games here ever. Um, <laughs> but my roommate actually works for the football team, so it's kind of fun because I get a little bit of the behind the scenes. I get to hear some, some gossip. Um, the stuff she talks about the most is mainly the morale of the team, especially after a win. She talks about how excited they are. And, and she does say that when they lose, they're a bit more rude uh, behind the scenes than, than they probably should be. But, <laughs> but when they have a win, they're, they're very happy. Yeah, and I know we have a big game coming up this weekend. They're playing Stony Brook Saturday at 6. Stony Brook's 0-5, Fordham's 5-1. and What are their odds of winning? What do you guys think? Well, Stony Brook is screwed, I think, to put it in simple terms. Uh, it's an 0-5 team. Yeah, they're at home, sure. Uh, but Fordham is kind of on, on a war path this year, I think, to prove that they are a really competitive program. And so far that's been seen. There's a lot of football left to play. 
Uh, I know this isn't a sports segment as a whole, so I don't want to get too analytical with you guys, but I think it's pretty safe to say uh, that Fordham will, will end this, at least this week, with a W. Uh, no controversy there. But if we move to number two on our list here, there could be some controversy with the new booster requirement that Fordham University has not recommended but mandated for its students. So students are required to get the new, I believe it's the fourth, if I'm tallying fourth things shot. right. Fourth Second shot. Boost. Second boost, fourth yeah. shot. Uh, the new COVID booster before no the 1st of November. So the university appointments are full, guys, which means students are going to have to go off campus, uh, which makes it a little more difficult. Obviously, there's a lot of places around the campus. Not too big. You could take a walk and go somewhere. But Fordham is recommending students go off campus and do that. Uh, is there really, I I'm not sure. It's always a touchy subject. When you get into matters like this, there is growing opposition. And Julia, I, I believe you know about, there was a parent letter asking for it to be a recommendation rather than a requirement for us students. There, there is. I think the issue at hand is that the CDC has not mandated the second booster yet. Um, so parents are confused as to why Fordham is doing it. Um, you know, I don't want to get super political. Me personally, I'm going to do whatever they tell me to do. Uh, not that I, that seem, has not stopped me from getting COVID yet. I seem to get it every four months. Um, and I hope to keep that streak going. <laughs> but, um, you know, I'm obviously going to, going to do whatever Fordham wants to do to keep me safe. Um, but it is, it is definitely surprising if you take a step back to see that the CDC has not, has not mandated it. And I think Fordham might be one of five schools in the country that is requiring the booster at such an early date. Um, and it is a, also an odd time to require it because students who are opposed to getting the booster, it's, it's, a, it's a time they can't really drop out. The, we have to get uh, boosted before November 1st. So it is, it is kind of weird. Yeah, personally, I was a little confused by the timing because with all the appointments being full, I thought maybe students could go home for Thanksgiving if you're headed home and get the shot there. But with everything going on, I guess they wanted to get it before the holiday rush. And I guess the timing doesn't really make sense to me, but I'm planning on getting it. And Julia, I want to kick it to you now with our finale. Our number one story for this week is actually taking place tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. It's President Tanya Tetlow's inauguration. Um, it's going to be a week-long inauguration, but the big event itself is taking place tomorrow. It started on Lincoln Center's campus this Tuesday, um, and on Friday tomorrow, there's going to be a mass, a lunch, a ceremony. Uh, WFUV is is having some events there. Um, are you guys go do you guys are you guys going to any of the events? Are I will be, ahead? actually. I have an excused absence for my yeah, lab you tomorrow. Because uh, we're some acapella. Yeah. <laughs> it sometimes has its perks, folks. Uh, so I will be there performing. I don't know the specific songs yet. I'll find out at rehearsal tonight, probably. That's always a what's happening uh, for me, at least rehearsals, Tuesdays, Sundays, and Thursdays. But uh, yeah, I think it's it's cool. I didn't think we were really gonna get invited to this. This is a big deal. Uh, it's a huge deal. It's a big deal. So I'm excited to be there, and I think it could be a, a very fun experience for us to have uh, at the inauguration. Yeah, I think uh, personally I'm driven by the food, and I know I sure. went to <laughs> President, uh, former President McShane's um, uh, when he decided he wasn't going to be here, his mass last year, and there was food afterwards, and it was great. Cool. So What would you I'm, have? I had a burger. It okay. was great. They had a soup section. It was Better than the calf, at least? Way better right. than the calf. That's, so, I mean, that's not hard to do, but yeah, pretty easy, luckily. But it was great, and I'm hoping to work my way into the lunch again this week. Sneak in. Should be easy. Yeah. <laughs> there has been a little bit of talk that supposedly there might, might be a protest tomorrow that takes place during the inauguration. It's going to be the faculty protest for higher wages. Oh. Um, have you guys yeah. heard anything? Any gossip about that? That is news to me. It's news that's to not you. going on, I guess, Welcome for us as segment, students. Welcome to the <laughs> maybe for <laughs> maybe for the Fordham staff, yeah, that might be their number one. Uh, that is very interesting, but it could be an interesting f sort of pause to a relatively exciting day. So I don't know where that'll go. But yeah, so big big things happening tomorrow. We'll see how it plays out. Fordham's first female and first lay president. It's a huge event, and that concludes our countdown. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in to on campus, and we will see you guys next week.